No, that two or more vaccines are also expected soon. Honorable Prime Minister, launch the vaccination drive by crediting and thanking our scientists. We are ever grateful for the strength and rigor of their mm -hmm. efforts. Mm -hmm. Having said that, well, we are all reminded time zero. and again that our fight against COVID-19 continues into 2021. Now, just as it happened after the two mm -hmm. world wars, there are signs that the political, economic, and strategic relations in the post-COVID world are changing. This moment in history Hello. is the dawn of a new era, one in which India is well poised to truly this be the land of promise and hope. I borrow the words of Rabindranath Tagore, faith is the bird that feels the light and sings when the dawn is still dark. Faith is the bird that feels the light and sings when the dawn is still dark. In this spirit, I can't help but recall the joy that we as cricket-loving nation felt after the Team India's recent spectacular success in Australia. It has reminded us of all the qualities that we as a people, particularly our youth, epitomize of having abundant promise and the unsuppressed thirst to perform and to succeed. Today, data shows that India now has one of the lowest death rate of 112 per million population and one of the lowest active cases of about 130 per million. This Most has laid rates. the foundation to the revival we are seeing now in the economy. This budget will be the first of this new Hello. decade. Uh. This budget will also be a digital budget and that has happened with all your support. So far, only three times has a budget followed a contraction in the economy. Yeah. All such contractions earlier morning, were morning, as a result of situations typical to India. This time, this the contraction is be a in our economy budget. is due to a global pandemic, just like, the several other, just like in several other countries. Having said that, I want to confidently state that our government is fully prepared to support and facilitate the economy's reset. This budget provides every opportunity for our economy to raise and capture the pace that it needs, to, uh, that it needs for a sustainable growth. 2021 is the year of many important milestones for our history. I mention a few of these. It is the 75th year of independence, 60 years of Goa's accession to India, 50 years of the 1971 India-Pakistan War. It will be the year of the eighth census of independent India. It will also be India's turn at the BRICS presidency, the year for our Chandrayaan-3 mission and the Haridwar Mahakumbh. Honorable Speaker, before yes, I commence yes. part A of the budget, I want to take a moment to acknowledge how isolating Next and distancing seemed like insurmountable challenges for a country like ours that has people coming together in times of crisis. It hurts us in many ways. It hurt us in many ways. I bow my head in respect to every citizen for the endurance shown in facing what was an undeniably a tough year for all our physical and mental well-being. Part A. In Part A, I wish to lay a vision for Atmanirbhar Bharat. Atmanirbhar Bharat or Atmanirbharta is not a new idea. Ancient India was largely self-reliant and equally a business Part epicenter of the, of the world. Atmanirbhar Bharat is an expression of the 130 crore Indians who have full confidence in their capabilities and skills. We are already part of international groupings such as the G20 and the BRICS, the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure and the International Solar Alliance 
are realities today due to India's efforts. The proposals in Part A will further strengthen the sankalp of nation first, doubling farmers' income, strong infrastructure, healthy India, good governance, opportunities for youth, education for all, women empowerment, and inclusive development, among others. Additionally, also on the path to fast implementation are the 13 promises we had made in the budget of 2015-16, which were to materialize during the Amrit Mahotsab of 2022 on the 75th year of our independence. They too resonate with the vision of Atmanir Bharta. The budget proposals for 21-22 rest on six pillars, health and well-being, physical and financial capital well, and infrastructure, inclusive development for aspirational India, reinvigorating human capital, innovation and R&D, and a sixth minimum government and maximum governance. I now move to talking about the first pillar, health and well-being. Even at the outset, I would like to say that the investment on health infrastructure in this budget has increased substantially. Progressively, as institutions absorb more, we shall commit more. Taking a holistic approach to health, we focus on strengthening three areas, preventive, curative, and well-being. Health systems. A new, new centrally sponsored scheme, PM Atma Nirbhar Swast Bharat Yojana, will be launched with an outlay of about 64,180 crores over six years. This will develop capacities of primary, secondary, and tertiary care health systems, strengthen existing national institutions, and create new institutions to cater to detection and cure of new and emerging diseases. This will be in addition to the National Health Mission. The main interventions under the scheme are support for over 17,000 rural and 11,000 urban health and wellness centers, setting up integrated public health labs in all districts, and, 30, uh, and 3,382 block public health units in 11 states, establishing criti critical care ho hospital blocks in 602 districts and 12 central institutions, strengthening of National Center for Disease Control, its five regional branches, and 20 metropolitan health surveillance units. Expansion of the integrated health information portal to all states and UTs to connect all public health labs. Operationalization of 17 new public health units and strengthening of 33 existing public health units at points of entry, that is at 32 airports, 11 seaports and 7 land crossings. Setting up of 15 health emergency operation centers and two mobile hospitals, and setting up of a national institution for One Health, a regional research platform for WHO, World Health Organization, Southeast Asia region office, nine biosafety level three laboratories, and four regional national institutes for virology. Nutrition. To strengthen nutritional content, delivery, outreach, and outcome, we will merge the supplementary nutrition program and the portion Abhiyan and launch the Mission Portion 2.0. We shall adopt an intensified strategy to improve nutritional outcomes across 112 aspirational districts. Universal coverage of water supply. The World Health Organization has repeatedly stressed the importance of clean water, sanitation, and clean environment 
as a prerequisite to achieving universal health. The Jal Jeevan Mission Urban will be launched. It aims at universal water supply in all 4,378 urban local bodies with 2.86 crores household tap connections as well as liquid waste management in 500 Amrit cities. It will be implemented over five years with an outlay of 2,87,000 crores. Swachh Bharat and Swast Bharat. For further Swachhata of Urban India, we in intend to focus on complete fecal sludge management and wastewater treatment, source segregation of garbage, reduction in single-use plastic, reduction in air pollution by effectively managing waste from construction and demolition activities, and bioremediation of all legacy dump sites. The Urban Swachh Bharat Mission 2.0 will be implemented with a total financial allocation of 1,41,678 crores over a period of five years from 2021. Clean air. To tackle the burgeoning problem of air pollution, I propose to provide an amount of 2,217 crores of rupees for 42 urban centers with a million plus population in this budget. Scrapping policy. We are separately announcing, Honorable Speaker, a voluntary vehicle scrapping policy to face out old and unfit vehicles. This will help in encouraging fuel efficient, environment friendly vehicles, thereby reducing vehicular pollution and oil import bills. Vehicle, vehicles would undergo fitness tests in automated fitness centers after 20 years in case of personal vehicles and after 15 years in case of commercial vehicles. Details of the scheme will be separately shared by the Ministry. Vaccines. The pneumococcal vaccine, a made in India product, is presently limited to only five states. It will be rolled out across the country. This will award more than 50,000 child deaths annually. Honorable Speaker, I have provided 35,000 crores of rupees for COVID-19 vaccine in this year, 21-22. I am committed to provide further funds if required. So the budget outlay for health and well-being is 2,23,846 crores in this BE 21-22 as against the BE of only 94,452 crores and it marks an increase of 137 percentage. The details of the same are at Annex Show 1 of the speech. Honourable Speaker, I now move to the second pillar, physical and financial capital and infrastructure. Atmanirbhar Bharat production-linked incentive schemes are things which I would like to pay, place an emphasis. For a $5 trillion economy, our manufacturing sector has to grow in double digits on a sustained basis. Our manufacturing companies need to become an integral part of global supply chains, possess core competence and cutting-edge technology. To achieve all of the above, PLI schemes to create manufacturing global champions for an Atmanirbhar Bharat have been announced for 13 sectors. For this, the government has committed nearly 1.97 lakh crores over five years starting this financial year. This initiative will help bring scale and size in key sectors, create and nurture global champions, and provide jobs to our youth. Textiles. 
to enable the textile industry to become globally competitive, attract large investments, and boost employment generation, a scheme of mega investment textiles park will be launched in addition to the PLI schemes. This will create world-class infrastructure with plug-and-play facilities to enable create global champions in exports. Seven textile parks will be established over three years. Infrastructure. The National Infrastructure Pipeline, which I announced in December 2019, is the first of its kind. Whole of government exercise ever undertaken by Government of India. The NIP was launched with 6,835 projects. The project pipeline has now expanded to 7,400 projects. Around 217 projects worth Rs. 1.10 lakh crores under some key infrastructure ministries have been completed. The NIP is a specific target which this government is committed to achieving over the coming years. It will require major increase in funding from both the government and the financial sector. In this budget, I propose to take concrete steps to do this in three ways. Firstly, by creating the institutional structures. Secondly, by a big thrust on monetizing assets. And thirdly, by enhancing the share of capital expenditure in central and state budgets. Infrastructure needs long-term debt financing. A professionally managed development financial institution is necessary to act as a provider, enabler, and catalyst for infrastructure financing. Accordingly, I shall introduce a bill to set up a development financial institution. I have provided a sum of 20,000 crore rupees to capitalize this institution. The ambition is to have a lending portfolio of at least 5 lakh crores for this DFI within three years' time. Debt financing of invits and rates by foreign portfolio investors will be enabled by making suitable amendments in the relevant re legislations. This will further ease access of finance to invits and rates, thus augmenting funds for infrastructure and real estate sectors. Asset monetization. Monetizing operating public infrastructure Monetizing operating public infrastructure assets is a very important financing option for new infra infrastructure construction. A national monetization pipeline of potential brownfield infrastructure assets will be launched. An asset monetization dashboard will also be created for tracking the progress and to provide visibility to investors. Some important measures in the direction of monetization are National Highways Authority of India and the PGCIL each have sponsored one in wit that will attract international and institutional investors. Five operational roads with an estimated enterprise value of 5,000 crores of rupees are being transferred to the NHAI in WIT. Similarly, transmission assets of value 7,000 crores will be transferred to the PGCIL in WIT. Railways will monetize dedicated freight corridor assets for operations and maintenance after commissioning. The next lot of airports will be monetized for operations and management concessions. Other core infrastructure assets that will be rolled out under the asset monetization programs are NH NHAI operational toll roads, two transmission assets of PGCL, three oil and gas 
pipelines of Gale Gas Authority of India Limited, IOCL and HPCL, airports uh, authority of India airports in tier 2 and 3 cities, other railway infrastructure assets, warehousing assets of CPSE such as the Central Warehousing Corporation and NAFED among others and sports stadiums. Sharp increase in capital budget. In the BE 2020-21, we had provided for 4.12 lakh crores for capital expenditure. It was our effort that in spite of resource crunch, we should spend more on capital and we are likely to end this year at around 4.39 lakh crores which I have provided in the RE of 2020-2021. For 21-22, I propose a sharp increase in capital expenditure and thus have provided 5.54 lakh crores, which is 34.5% more than the BE of 2020-2021. Of this, I have kept a sum of more than 44,000 crores in the budget head of the Department of Economic Affairs to be provided for projects, programs or departments that show good progress in capital expenditure and are in need of further funds. Over and above this expenditure, we would also be providing more than 2 lakh crores to states and autonomous bodies for their capital expenditure. We will also work out specific mechanisms to nudge states to spend more of their budget on creation of infrastructure. Roads and highways infrastructure. More than 13,000 kilometer length of roads at a cost of 3.3 lakh crores has already been awarded under the 5.3 5 lakh crores Bharat Mala Paryojana project of which 3,800 kilometers have been constructed. By March 2022, we would be awarding another 8,500 kilometers and complete an additional 11,000 kilometers of national highway corridor. To further augment road infrastructure, more economic corridors are also being planned. Some are 3,500 kilometers of national highway works in the state of Tamil Nadu at an investment of 1.03 lakh crores. These include, these include Madurai Kollam Corridor, Chittur Tachur Corridor, and construction will start next year. Second, 1,100 kilometer of national highway works in the state of Kerala at an investment of 65,000 crores, including, including 600 kilometer section of Mumbai Kanyakumari corridor in Kerala. Third, 675 km of highway works in the state of West Bengal at a cost of at a cost of 25,000 crores, including upgradation of existing road Kolkata Siliguri. National highway works of around 19,000 crores are currently in progress in the state of Assam. Further works of more than 34,000 crores covering more than 1,300 kilometers of national highway will be undertaken in the state in the coming three years. Some of the flagship corridors and other important projects 
that would see considerable activity in 2021-22 are in Annexure 2 to my speech. I am also providing an enhanced outlay of 1,18,101 lakh crores, 1,18,101 crores for Ministry of Road Transport and Highway, of which 1,8,230 crores is for capital, the highest ever provided. <laughs> Railway infrastructure. Honorable Speaker, sir, Indian Railways have prepared a National Rail Plan for India 2030. The plan is to create a future-ready railway system by 2030, bringing down the logistic cost for, a, for an industry is at the core of a strategy to enable Make in India. It is expected that Western Dedicated Freight Corridor and Eastern Dedicated Freight Corridor will be commissioned by June 2022. The following additional initiatives are also proposed. The Sonnagar Gomo sections, 263 kilometers of Eastern Dedicated Freight Corridor will be taken up in PPP mode in this year itself. Gomo Dankuni section of 274.3 kilometers will be also taken up short, shortly in short success, succession. We will undertake future dedicated freight corridor projects, namely East Coast Corridor from Karakpur to Vijayawada, East West Corridor from Bhusaval to Karakpur to Dankuni, and North South Corridor from Itarsi to Vijayawada. Detailed project reports will be undertaken in the first phase. Broad gauge route kilometers, RKM as they refer to, electrified is expected to reach 46,000 kilometers, 46,000 RKM. That is 72 percent by end of 2021 from 41. 1,548 RKMs on 1st October 2020. 100% electrification of broad gauge routes will be completed by December 2023. For passenger convenience and safety, the following measures are being proposed. We will introduce the aesthetically designed Vista Dome LHB coach on tourist routes to give better travel experience to passengers. The safety measures undertaken in the past few years have borne results. To further strengthen this effort, high density network and highly utilized network routes of Indian Railways will be provided with an indigenously developed automatic train protection system that eliminates train collusion due to human error. I am providing a record sum of 1,10,055 crores for railways, which, of which 1,7,100 crores is for capital expenditure only. Urban infrastructure. We will work towards raising the share of public transport in urban areas through expansion of metro rail networks and augmentation of city bus services. A new scheme will be launched at a cost of 18,000 crores to support augmentation of public bus transport services. The scheme will facilitate deployment of innovative PPP models to enable private sector players to finance, to acquire, to operate, and to maintain over 20,000 buses. The scheme will boost the automobile sector, provide fillip to economic growth, create employment opportunities for our youth, and enhance ease of mobility for urban residents. A total of 702 kilometers of conventional metro is operational and another 1,016 kilometers of metro and RRTS is under construction in 27 cities. Two new technologies, that is Metrolite 
and Metro Neo will be deployed to provide metro rail systems at much lesser cost with same experience, convenience and safety in Tier 2 cities and peripheral areas of Tier 1 cities also. 18,788 crores. Nagpur Metro Rail Project Phase 2 and Nashik Metro at a cost of 5,976 crores and 2,092 crores respectively. Power infrastructure. The past six years have seen a number of reforms and achievements in power sector. We have added 139 gigawatts of installed capacity, connected an additional 2.8 crore households, and added 1.41 lakh circuit kilometers of transmission lines. The distribution companies across the country are monopolies, either government or private. There is a need to provide choice to the consumers by promoting competition. A framework will be put in place to give consumers alternatives to choose from among more than, 13, uh, more than one distribution companies. I read that sentence again. A framework will be put in place to give consumers alternatives to choose from among more than one distribution company. The viability of distribution companies is a serious concern. A revamped, reforms-based, results-linked power distribution sector scheme will be launched with an outlay of 3,5,984 crores over five years. The scheme will provide assistance to DISCOMs for in 2021-22 for generating hydrogen from green power sources, ports, shipping and waterways. Major ports will be moving from managing their operational services on their own to a model where a private partner will manage it for them. For the purpose, for the purpose, seven projects worth more than 2,000 crores will be offered by the major ports on private-public partnership mode in FY21-22, a scheme for promoting flagging of merchant ships in India will be launched by providing subsidy support to Indian shipping companies in global tenders floated by ministries and CPSCs. An amount of 1,624 crores will be provided over five years. This initiative will enable greater training and employment opportunities for Indian seafarers besides enhancing Indian companies' share in global shipping. India has enacted Recycling of Ships Act in 2019 and acceded to the Hong Kong International Convention. Around 90 ship recycling yards at Alang in Gujarat have already achieved HKC compliant certificates. Efforts will be made to bring more ships to India from Europe and Japan. Recycling capacities of around 4.5 million light displacement ton LDT will be doubled by 2024. This is expected to generate an additional 1.5 lakh jobs for our youth. Petroleum and natural gas. Our government has kept fuel supplies running across the country without interruption during the COVID-19 lockdown period. Taking note of crucial nature, taking note of the crucial nature of the sector in people's lives, the following key initiatives are being announced. One, Woodsvilla scheme 
which has benefited 8 crore households will be extended to cover 1 crore more beneficiaries. We will add 100 more districts in next three years to the city gas distribution network. A gas pipeline project will be taken up in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. An independent gas transport system operator will be set up for facilitation and coordination of booking of common carrier capacity in all natural gas pipelines on a non-discriminatory open access basis. Financial capital. I propose to consolidate the provisions of the SEBI Act 1992, Depositories Act 1996, Securities Contracts Regulation Act 1956, and Government Securities Act 2007 into a rationalized single Securities Markets Code. The government would support the development of a world-class fintech hub at the gift IFSC. To instill confidence amongst the participants in corporate SBC. bond market during times of stress and to generally enhance secondary market liquidity, it is proposed to create a permanent institutional framework. The proposed body would purchase investment grade debt securities both in the stressed and normal times and help in the development of the bond market. In the budget 2018-19, government had announced its intent to establish a system of regulated gold exchanges in the country. For the purpose, SEBI will be notified as the regulator and warehousing development and regulatory authority will be strengthened to set up a commodity market ecosystem arrangement including vaulting, assaying, logistics, etc. in addition to warehousing. Towards investor protection, I propose to introduce an investor charter as a right of all financial investors across all financial products. All the to give a further boost to the non-conventional energy the sector, I propose to provide additional capital infusion of 1,000 crores to Solar Energy Corporation of India and 1,500 crores to Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency. I propose to amend the Insurance Act 1938 to increase the permissible FDI limit from 49% to 74% in insurance companies and allow foreign ownership and control with safeguards. Under the new structure, the majority of directors on the board and key management persons would be resident Indians with at least 50% of directors being independent Insurance directors and specified percentage of profits being retained as general reserve. Stressed asset resolution by setting up a new structure. The CMA high level of provisioning by public sector banks of their stress assets calls for a measure to clean up the bank books. An asset reconstruction company limited, an asset management company would be set up to consolidate and take over the existing stress debt and then manage and dispose of the assets to alternative investment funds and other potential investors for eventual value realization. Recapitalization of PSB. To further consolidate the financial capital capacity of PSBs, further recapitalization of 20,000 crores is proposed in 21-22. Deposit insurance. Last year, government had approved an increase in the deposit insurance cover from 1 lakh rupees to 5 lakhs for bank customers. I shall be moving amendments to DICGC Act 19, 1961 
in this session itself to streamline the provision so that if a bank is temporarily unable to fulfill its obligations, the depositors of such bank can get easy and time-bound access to their deposits the ICGC Act to the extent of the deposit insurance cover. This would help depositors of banks that are currently under stress. To improve credit discipline while continuing to protect the interests of small borrowers for NBFCs with minimum asset size of 100 crores, the minimum loan size eligible for debt recovery under the Securitization and Reconstruction of Financial Assets and the Enforcement of Security Interest Surface Act 2002, it is proposed to be reduced from the existing level of 50 lakhs to 20 Companies lakhs. Act. Company matters. The decriminalization of the procedural and technical compoundable offenses under Companies Act 2013 is now I now propose to take up decriminalization of the Limited Liability Partnerships Act 2008. Honorable Speaker, I propose to revise the definition under, under the Companies Act 2013 for small companies by increasing the threshold for paid up capital from not exceeding 50 lakh to not exceeding 2 crores and turnover from not exceeding 2 crores to not exceeding 20 crores. Yeah, this will benefit this more than 2 lakh companies yeah. in easing their compliance requirements. As a further measure which directly benefits startups and innovators, I propose to incentivize the incorporation of one person companies by allowing one person companies to grow without any restriction on paid up capital and turnover, allowing their conversion into any other type of company at any time, reducing the residency limit for an Indian citizen to set up an one-person company no from 182 days to 120 days, and allow also non-resident Indians to incorporate OPCs in India. This will be a big boost for startups. To ensure faster resolution of cases, the NCLT framework will be strengthened, e-court system will, shall be implemented, and alternate methods of debt resolution and special framework for MSMEs shall be introduced. During the coming fiscal, we will be launching data analytics, artificial intelligence, machine learning, driven MCA 2.0. 2.1 version to MCA 21 version 3.0. MCA 21 version 3.0. This version 3.0 will have additional for modu modules for e scrutiny, e adjudication, e consultation, and compliance management. Disinvestment and strategic sale. In spite of COVID-19, we have kept working towards strategic disinvestment. A number of transactions, namely BPCL, Air India, Shipping Corporation of India, Container Corporation of India, IDBI Bank, Bharat uh, Earth Movers Limited, Pavan Hans, Neelachal Ispat Nigam Limited, among others, would be completed in 21-22. Other than IDBI Bank, we propose to take up the two public sector banks and one general insurance company in the year 21-22. This would require legislative amendments and I propose to introduce the amendments in this session itself. In 21-22, we would also bring the IPO of LIC for which I am bringing the requisite amendments in this session itself. 
In the Atmanirbhar package, I had announced that we will come out with a policy of strategic disinvest disinvestment of public sector enterprises. I'm happy to inform the House that the government has provided, provided sorry, the government has approved the said policy. The policy provides a clear roadmap for disinvestment in all non-strategic and strategic sectors. We have kept four areas that are strategic, where bare minimum CPSCs will be maintained and rest privatized. In the remaining sectors of all CPSCs, will be privatized. The main highlights of the policy are mentioned in Annexure 3. To fast forward the disinvestment policy, I'm asking Neeti to work out uh, on the next list of center public sector companies that would be taken up for strategic disinvestment. To similarly incentivize states to take to disinvestment of their public sector companies, we will work out an incentive package of central funds to states. Idle assets will not contribute to Atmanirbhar Bharat. The non-core assets largely consist of surplus land with government ministries and departments and public sector enterprises. Monetizing of land can either be by way of direct sale or concession or by similar means. This requires special abilities, and for this purpose, I propose to use a special purpose vehicle in the form of a company that would carry out this activity. In, in order to ensure timely completion of closure of sick or loss-making CPSCs, we will introduce a revised mechanism that will ensure timely closure of such units. I have estimated 1,75,000 crores as receipts from disinvestment in BE 21-22. Government financial reforms. Under the Treasury single account, the TSA system, autonomous bodies directly draw funds from the government's account at the time of actual expenditure, saving interest costs. We will extend the TSA system for universal application from 21-22. On the recommendation of the 15th Finance Commission, we have undertaken a detailed exercise to rationalize and bring down the number of centrally sponsored schemes. This will enable consolidation of outlays for better impact. The government is committed to the development of multi-state cooperatives and will provide all support to them to further streamline the ease of doing business for cooperatives. I propose to set up a separate administrative structure for them. So the third pillar of Atmanirbhar Bharat, inclusive development for aspirational India. Honorable Speaker, sir, under this pillar, I will cover agriculture and allied sectors, farmers' welfare and rural India, migrant workers and labor, and financial inclusion. Agriculture. Our government is committed to the welfare of farmers. The MSP regime has undergone a sea change to assure price that is at least 1.5 times the cost of production across all commodities. has also continued to increase at a steady pace. This has resulted in increase in payment to farmers substantially. In case, in case of wheat, a total amount paid to farmers in 2013-14. Honorable Speaker, sir. Honorable Speaker, sir. 
the data that I give now is important for all honourable members to kindly hear. In case of wheat, the total amount paid to farmers in 2013-14 was 33,874 crores. In 2019-20, it was 62,802 crores. And even better, Honourable Speaker, no, in 2020-2021, this issues. amount paid to farmers was 75,060 crores. Honourable Speaker, again an important fact, the number of wheat growing farmers that were benefited increased in 2020-21 to 43.36 lakh compared to, compared to 35.57 lakhs in 2019-20. That much of an increase within one year. For Paddy, again an important data, for Paddy, the amount paid in 2013-14 was 63,928 crores. In 2019-20, this increased to 1,41,930 crores. Even better, even better, in 2020-2021, this is further... This, in 2020-21, in 2020-21, this is further estimated, and I'm saying this is further estimated because the procurement is ongoing, and therefore I can't give you the final figure. This is further estimated to increase to 1,72,752 crores. The number of farmers benefited increased from 1.24 crores in 2019-20 to 1.54 crores in 2020-21. In the same way, Honourable Speaker, sir, in the case of pulses, the amount paid in 2013-14 was 236 crores. In 2019-20, this was increased to 8,285 crores. Now, now in 2021, it is at 10,530 crores. More than 40 times increase from 2013-14. The receipts to cotton farmers, cotton farmers, have seen a stupendous increase from 90 crores in 2013-14 to 25,974 crores in, I'm giving you data as of 27th January 2021, this is bound to increase. From 90 crores for cotton farmers, in 2013-14 to 25,974 crores in 2021. All the details in complete narration is available in Annex 4 to my speech. Early this year, Honorable Prime Minister had launched the Swamitva scheme. Under this, a record of rights is being given to property owners in villages. Up till now, about 1.80 lakh property owners in 1,241 villages have been provided cards. I propose during 21-22 to extend this to cover all states and union territories. To provide adequate credit to our farmers, I have enhanced the agricultural credit target to 16.5 lakh crores in this year, we will focus on ensuring increased credit flow to animal husbandry, Pashupalan, dairy, and to Matsyakar, to the fisheries. We are enhancing the allocation to the Rural Infrastructure Development Fund from 30,000 crores 
to 40,000 crores. The micro-irrigation fund with a corpus of 5,000 crores has been created under NABARD. I propose to double it by augmenting it by another 5,000 crores to boost value addition in agriculture and allied products and their exports, the scope of Operation Green Scheme that is presently applicable to only tomatoes, onions and potatoes will be enlarged to include 22 perishable crops. Around 1.68 lakh crore farmers, around 1.68 crore farmers are registered and 1.14 lakh crores of rupees trade value has been carried out through eNAMS, the National Agricultural Market. Keeping in view the transparency and the competitiveness that eNAM has brought into the agricultural market, 1,000 more mandis will be integrated with eNAM. Honorable Speaker, sir, with all this, the Agricultural Infrastructure Fund would be made available to the APMCs for augmenting their infrastructure facilities. Fisheries. I am proposing substantial investments in the development of modern fishing harbors and fish landing centers. To start with, five major fishing harbors. Kochi, Chennai, Vishagapatnam, Paradeep, and Petua Ghat will be developed as hubs for economic activity. We will also develop inland fishing harbors and fish landing centers along the banks of rivers and waterways. Seaweed farming is an emerging sector with potential to transform the lives of coastal communities. It will provide large-scale employment and additional incomes. To promote seaweed farming, and cultivation, I propose a multi-purpose seaweed park to be established in Tamil Nadu. Migrant workers and laborers, we have launched the One Nation, One Ration Card scheme through which beneficiaries can claim their rations anywhere in the country. Migrant workers in particular benefit from the scheme those staying away from their families can partially claim their ration where they are stationed, while their family in their native places can claim the rest. I am happy to in inform you that One Nation, One Ration Card plan is under implementation by 32 states and union territories. Reaching about 69 crore beneficiaries, that's a total of 86% beneficiaries covered. The remaining four states and UTs will be integrated in the next few months. To further extend our efforts towards the unorganized labor force, migrant workers in particular, I propose to launch a portal that will collect relevant information on gig workers, building and construction workers, among others. This will help formulate health, housing, skill, insurance credit, and food schemes for all migrant workers. We will conclude a process that began 20 Old years ago in. with the implementation of the four labor, laws labor codes. For the first time globally, social security benefits will be extended to gig and platform workers. Minimum wages will apply to all categories of workers and they will all be covered by the Employees State Insurance Corporation. Women will be allowed to work in all categories and also in the night shifts with adequate protection. At the same time, compliance burden on employers will be reduced with a single registration and licensing and online returns. Financial inclusion. To further facilitate credit flow under the scheme of Stand Up India for the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes and also women, I propose to reduce the margin money requirement from 
25% to 15% only. And to also include loans for activities in allied sectors in, the in allied activities in agriculture. We have taken a number of steps to support the MSME sector in this budget. I have provided 15,700 crores to this sector, more than double of the last year's B. Honorable Speaker, sir, I now go to the fourth pillar, reinvigorating human capital. The national education policy announced recently has had good reception. In school education, more than 15,000 schools will be qualitatively strengthened to include all components of the national education policy. They shall emerge as exemplar schools in their regions, hand-holding and mentoring other schools to achieve the ideals of policy. 100 new scenic schools will be set up in partnership with NGOs, private schools and Higher states. Education. Higher education. In Budget 2019-20, I had mentioned about the setting up of a higher education commission in India. We would be introducing the legislation this year to implement the same. It will be an umbrella body having four separate vehicles for standard setting, accreditation, regulation and funding. Many of our cities have various institutions, universities and colleges supported by the Government of India. Hyderabad, for example, has about 40 major institutions. In, in nine such cities, we will create a formal umbrella structure so that these institutions can have better synergy while also retaining their internal autonomy. A glue grant will be set aside for this purpose. For accessible higher education in Ladakh, I propose to set up a central university in Leh The other important projects to be taken up as a part of the NEP are listed in Annexure 5. Scheduled caste and scheduled tribes welfare. We have set ourselves a target of establishing 750 Eklavya model residential schools in our tribal areas. I propose to increase the unit cost of each such school from 20 crores, which is what it is now, to 38 crores, and for hilly and difficult areas, to 48 crores. This would help creating robust infrastructure facilities for our tribal students. We have revamped the post-metric scholarship scheme for the welfare of scheduled caste students. I have also enhanced the central assistance in this regard. We, have, we are allotting 35,219 crores for six years till 25-26 to benefit four crores scheduled caste students. Skilling. In 2016, we had launched the National Apprenticeship Promotion Scheme. The government proposes to amend the Apprenticeship Act with a view to further enhancing apprenticeship opportunities for our youth. We will realign the existing scheme of National Apprenticeship Training Scheme for providing post-education apprenticeship, training of graduates and diploma holders in engineering. Over 3,000 crores will be provided for this purpose. An initiative is underway, Honorable Speaker, in partnership with the United Arab Emirates to benchmark skill qualifications assessment and certification, accompanied by the deployment of cert certified workforce. We also have a collaborative training intertraining program between India and Japan to facilitate transfer of Japanese industrial and vocational skills, techniques and knowledge. We will take forward this initiative with many more countries also. Innovation and R&D. In my budget speech of 2019, I had announced the National Research Foundation. We have now worked 
worked out the modalities and the NRF outlay will be of 50,000 crores over five years. It will ensure that the overall research ecosystem in the country is strengthened with focus on identified national priority thrust areas. There has been a manifold, in, there, there has been a manifold increase in digital payments in the recent past. To give a further boost to digital transactions, I earmark 1,500 crores for a proposed scheme that will provide financial incentive to promote digital mode of payment. We will undertake a new initiative, National Language Translation Mission. This will enable the wealth of governance and policy-related knowledge on the Internet being made available in major Indian languages. The new Space India Limited, a PSU, under the Department of Space, will execute the PSLV CS51 launch, carrying the Am Amazonia satellite from Brazil, along with a few smaller Indian satellites. As part of the Gaganyaan mission activities, four Indian astronauts are being trained on generic space flight aspects in Russia. The first unmanned launch is slated for December 2021. Our oceans are a storehouse of living and non-living resources. To better understand this realm, we will launch a deep ocean mission with a budget outlay of more than 4,000 crores over five years. Then this mission will cover deep ocean survey back. exploration Focus. and projects for the conservation of deep sea biodiversity. I come to the sixth pillar, Honorable Speaker, minimum government, maximum governance. Honorable Speaker, sir, this is the last of the six pillars. This will outline plans for reforms in one of our core principles of minimum government, maximum governance. We have taken a number of steps to bring reforms in tribunals in the last few years for speedy delivery of justice. Continuing with the reforms process, I now propose to take further measures to rationalize the functioning of tribunals. We have introduced the National Commission for Allied Healthcare Professionals Bill in Parliament. National Commission for Allied Healthcare Professionals Bill in the Parliament. With a view to ensure transparent and efficient regulation of 56 allied healthcare professionals. Additionally, to bring about transparency, efficiency, and governance reforms in the nursing profession the National Nursing and Midwifery Commission Bill will be introduced by the government for passing. To have ease of doing business for those who deal with government or CPSCs and carry out contracts, I propose to set up a conciliation mechanism and mandate it its use for quick resolution of contractual disputes. This will instill confidence in private investors and contractors. Honorable Speaker, sir, the forthcoming census could be the first digital census in the history of India. For this monumental milestone marking task, I have allocated 3,768 crores in this year, 21-22. Honorable Speaker, Goa is celebrating the Diamond Jubilee Year of the state's liberation from Portuguese rule. From the Government of India's side, I propose to grant 300 crores to the Government of Goa for the celebration. I propose to provide 1,000 crores for the welfare of tea workers why especially Assam women and children in Assam and West Bengal. A special scheme will be devised for the same.
fiscal position fiscal position in these last few paragraphs in these last few paragraphs of part a of my speech i draw the attention of this august house to the fact that at the beginning of the current financial year the pandemic's impact on the economy resulted in a weak revenue flow weak revenue inflow this was combined with high expenditure to provide essential relief to vulnerable sections of the society especially the poor the women scheduled castes and scheduled tribes unlike many other countries we opted for a serious uh, for a series of medium sized packages during the pandemic so that we could calibrate and target our response according to the evolving situation once the health situation stabilized and the lockdown was being slowly lifted we switched to ramping up government spending so as to revive domestic demand as a result against as a result against an original b expenditure of 30.42 lakh crores for 2020-21 our re estimates are 34 lakhs 34.50 lakhs 30.42 now within the year going up to 34.5 lakh crores we have maintained quality of expenditure the capital expenditure estimated in the re is 4.39 lakh crores as against 4.12 lakh crores in the be stage so the beginning of the year we had marked only 4.12 lakh whereas it is 4.39 lakh crores as we end the year fiscal deficit in re 2020 2021 is pegged at 9.5% of the gdp fiscal deficit in re 2020 to 2021 is pegged at 9.5% of gdp we have funded this through government borrowings multilateral borrowings small saving funds and short term borrowings we would need another 80000 crores for which we would be approaching the market in these two months we would be needing and the 80000 crores for which we would be approaching the markets in these two months to ensure that the economy is given the required push our be estimates for expenditure in 2122 are 34.83 lakh crores this includes 5.54 lakh crores as capital expenditure an increase of 34.5% over the be figure of 2020 2021 the fiscal deficit in be 21 22 is estimated to be 6.8% of the gdp the gross borrowing from the market for the next year would be around 12 lakh crores we plan to continue with our path of fiscal consolidation and intend to reach the fiscal deficit level below 4.5% of the gdp by 2025 2026 with a fairly steady decline over the period we hope to achieve the consolidation by first increasing the buoyancy of tax revenue through improved compliance and secondly by increased receipts from monetization of assets including public sector enterprises and land the contingency fund of india is being proposed to be augmented the contingency fund of india is being proposed to be augmented from 500 crores to 30000 crores through finance bill in accordance with the views of the 15th finance commission we are allowing a normal ceiling of net borrowing for the states at 4% of gsdp for the year 21 22 a portion of the ceiling will be earmarked to be spent on incremental capital expenditure additional borrowing additional borrowing ceiling 
of 0.5% of the GSDP will also be provided subject to conditions. States will be expected to reach a fiscal deficit of 3% of GSDP by 2023-24 as recommended by the 15th Finance Commission. In the July 2019-20 budget, I introduced the Statement 27 on extra budgetary resources. It disclosed the borrowings of the government agencies that went towards funding <coughs> Government of India schemes and whose repayment burden was on the government. In my 2020-21 budget, I, had, I enhanced the scope and coverage of that statement by including the loans provided by government to the FCI, the Food Corporation of India. Taking a step further in this direction, I propose to discontinue the NSSF loan to FCI for food subsidy and accordingly budget provisions have been made in RE 2020-21 and in the BE 2021-22. The extra budgetary resource details are at Annexure 6. We know that the FRBM Act mandates fiscal deficit of 3% of GDP to be achieved by 31st March 2020-2021. The effect of this year's unforeseen and unprecedented circumstances has necessitated the submission of a deviation statement under sections, five, under sections 4 of um, subclause 5 and section 7, subclause 3, uh, 3B of the FRBM Act, which I am laying on the table of the House as part of the FRBM documents. Towards achieving central government fiscal deficit along the broad path that I have already indicated, I will be introducing an amendment to the FRBM Act. Honorable Speaker, on the 9th of December 2020, the 15th Finance Commission submitted its final report covering the period 2021 to 2026 to the Rashtrapati G. The government has laid the Commission's report along with the explanatory memorandum in the Parliament re retaining the vertical shares of the states at 41%. We recognize our commitment to fiscal federalism and propose therefore to adhere to this recommendation. Jammu and Kashmir in the 14th Finance Commission was entitled to get devolution being a state. Now the funds of the UTs of Jammu Kashmir and Ladakh would be provided by the centre. I have also provided on the Commission's recommendation 1,18,452 crores as revenue deficit grant to 17 states in 21 22, as this against 74,340 crores to 14 Party. states in 2020-21. Honourable Speaker, I would now move to Part B of my speech. Honourable Speaker, the world is facing a serious challenge of the pandemic and its aftershock. In these trying times, when many economies are struggling to revive, our people and our industry have exhibited remarkable resilience. As I mentioned already, post-pandemic, a new world order seems to be emerging, one in which Asia is poised to occupy a prominent position and India will have a leading role therein. In this scenario, our tax system has to be transparent, efficient, and should promote investments and employment in our country. At the same time, it should put minimum burden on our taxpayers. I borrow the words of Thiruvalluvar, the saint. Yetralum, eetalum, kaastalum, kaasta vagutalum, nalla valladarasu. A king or a ruler is the one who creates and acquires wealth, protects and distributes it 
for common good. Tirukkur. Direct tax proposals. Keeping this in mind, the words of Tirukkural, our government introduced a series of reforms in the direct tax system for the benefit of our taxpayers and the economy. Few months prior to the pandemic, in order to attract investments, we slashed our corporate tax, corporate tax rate to make it among the lowest in the world. The dividend distribution tax too was abolished. The burden of taxation on small taxpayers was eased by increasing rebates. In 2020, the return filers saw a dramatic increase to 6.48 crores from 3.31 crores in 2014. In the direct tax administration, we had recently introduced the faceless assessment and faceless appeal. I now seek to take further steps to simplify the tax administration, ease compliance and reduce litigation. Relief to senior citizens. I begin my direct tax proposals by offering my pranam to our senior citizens. Many of them, despite having foregone several basic necessities of their own, have strived to build our nation. Now in the 75th year of independence of our country, when we continue our endeavor with renewed vigor, we shall reduce compliance burden Thanks. on our senior citizens who are 75 years of age and above. Senior citizens For are senior citizens just have who the only have income, pension and interest no income, to be I propose exemption from filing their income tax return. The paying bank will deduct the necessary tax on their income. Reduction in time for income tax proceedings. This is a very key announcement, if you, if you ask me. Honorable Speaker, presently an assessment can be reopened up to six years and in serious tax fraud cases for up to 10 years. As a result, taxpayers the have to remain under for uncertainty for a very long time. Years. I therefore propose to reduce this time limit Serious for reopening of assessments to three years from the present six years. In serious tax evasion cases too, only where there is only only where there is evidence of concealment of income of fifty lakh or more in a year. Right. So the serious in ones. serious tax evasion cases too. Only where there is evidence of concealment of income of 50 lakh or more in a year Chief can the assessment be reopened up to 10 years. Even this reopening can be done only after the approval of the principal chief commissioner, the highest level of income tax department. Setting up the dispute resolution committee. Honorable Speaker, it has been the resolve of this government to reduce litigation which masks the present taxation system. The government came out with the direct taxation Vibhatse Vishwa scheme to give taxpayers an opportunity to settle long pending disputes and be relieved to further strain on their time and resources. The response from taxpayers has been the best ever as over 1,10,000 taxpayers have already opted to settle tax disputes of over 85,000 crores under the scheme. To further reduce litigation for small taxpayers, I propose to constitute a dispute resolution committee for them, which will be faceless to ensure efficiency, transparency and accountability. Anyone with a taxable income up to 50 lakh and disputed income up to 10 lakh shall be eligible to approach the committee. Faceless ITAT. For ease of compliance and to reduce discretion, we are committed to make the taxation processes faceless. The government has already introduced faceless assessment and appeal this year. The next level of income tax appeal is the Income Tax Appellate Tribunal. I now pro propose to make this tribunal faceless. We shall establish a national faceless 
Income Tax Appellate Tribunal Center. All communication between the tribunal and the appellant shall be electronic. Where personal hearing is needed, it shall be done through video conferencing. Relaxations to NRI. When non-resident Indians return to India, they have issues with respect to their accrued incomes in their foreign retirement accounts. This is usually due to mismatch in taxation period. They also face difficulties in getting credit for Indian taxes in foreign jurisdictions. Tax I propose to notify now. rules for removing their hardship June, of double taxation. Exemption from audit. Currently, if your turnover exceeds one crore, you have to get your accounts audited. In February 2020 budget, I had increased the limit for tax audit to five crores for those who carry out 95% of their transactions digitally to further incentivize digital transactions and to reduce compliance burden, I propose to increase this limit for tax audit for such persons from 5 crores to 10 crores. Relief for dividend. In the previous budget, I had abolished the dividend distribution tax in order to incentivize investment. Dividend was made taxable in the hands of shareholders. Now, in order to provide ease of compliance, I propose to make dividend payment to rate and invit exempt from TDS. Further, as the amount of dividend income cannot be estimated correctly by the shareholders for paying advance tax, I propose to provide the advance that I propose to provide that advanced tax liability on dividend income shall arise only after the declaration or payment of dividend. Also for the foreign portfolio investors, I propose to enable deduction of tax on dividend income at lower treaty rate. Attracting foreign investment into infrastructure sector. In the last budget, for attracting foreign investment in the infrastructure sector, we had granted 100% tax exemption subject to certain conditions to foreign sovereign wealth funds and pension funds on their income from investment in, in, in Indian infrastructure. We have noticed that few of such funds are facing difficulties in meeting some of the uh, conditions. In order to ensure that a large number of funds invest in India, I propose to relax some of these conditions relating to prohibition on private funding, restriction on commercial activities, and direct investment in infrastructure. In order to allow funding of infrastructure by issue of zero coupon bonds, I propose to make notified infrastructure debt funds eligible to raise funds by issuing tax-efficient zero coupon bonds. Affordable housing. Affordable housing and rental housing. This government sees housing for all and affordable housing as priority areas. In July 2019 budget, I provided an additional deduction of interest amounting to 1.5 lakh for loan taken to purchase an affordable house. I propose to extend the eligibility of this condition by one more year to 31st March 2022. House tax. The additional House deduction of 1.5 lakh mm -hmm. shall therefore be available for loans taken up to 31st March 2022 for the purchase of affordable houses. Further, to keep up the supply affordable of affordable houses, I propose that the house, affordable housing house project can uh, avail a tax holiday tax for yeah. one more year till 31st March, 19, uh, 31st March 2022. These are available now for projects also. We are committed to promote supply of affordable rental housing for migrant workers. For this, I propose to allow tax exemption 
for notified affordable rental housing projects. Tax incentives to IFSC. As I mentioned in part A of the speech, the government is committed to making the International Financial Services Center in Gibbs City a global financial hub. In addition to the tax incentives already provided, I propose to include, among others, tax holiday for capital gains for aircraft leasing companies, tax exemption for aircraft lease rentals paid to foreign lessors, foreign tax incentive foreign for relocating in foreign IFSC. funds in the IFSC, and to allow tax exemption to the investment division of foreign banks located in the IFSC. Pre-filling of returns. Honorable Speaker, in order to ease compliance for the taxpayer, details of salary income, tax payments, TDS, etc., already come pre-filled in income tax returns. To further ease filing of returns, details of capital gains from listed securities, dividend income, and interest from banks, post office, etc., will also be now pre-filled. Relief to small trusts. We hope to reduce compliance burden on small charitable trusts running educational institutions and hospitals. So far, there is a blanket exemption to such entities whose annual receipt does not exceed 1 crore of rupees. I now propose to increase this amount to 5 crores. <laughs> Labor welfare. We have noticed that some employers deduct the contribution of employees toward provident funds, superannuation funds, and other social security funds, but do not deposit these contributions within the specified time. For these employees, this means a loss of interest or income. In cases where an employer later becomes financially unviable, non-deposit results in a permanent loss for the employees. In order to ensure that employees' contributions are deposited on time, I reiterate that the late deposit of employees' contribution by the employer will not be allowed as deduction to the employer. Incentives for startups. In order to incentivize startups in the country, I propose to extend the eligibility of, for claiming tax holiday for startups by one more year, till 31st March 2022. Further, in order to incentivize funding for the startups, I propose to extend the capital gains exemption for investment in startups by one more year till 31st March 2022. Sir, I now come to indirect tax proposals, GST. Before I come to my indirect tax proposals, I would like to appraise the House on GST. The GST is now four years old, and we have taken several measures to further simplify it. Some of the measures include nil return through SMS, quarterly return and monthly payment of, for small taxpayers, electronic invoice system, validated input tax statements, pre-filled editable GST return, and staggering of returns filing. The capacity of GST and system has also been enhanced. We have also deployed deep analytics and artificial intelligence to identify tax ev evaders and fake billers and launched special drives against them. The results speak for themselves. We have made record collections in the last few months. The GST Council has painstakingly thrashed out thorny issues. As chairperson to the Council, I want to assure this House that we shall take every possible measure to smoothen the GST further and to remove anomalies such as inverted duty structure. Custom duty rationalization. 
Our custom duty policy should have the twin objective of promoting domestic manufacturing and helping India get on to global value chain and export better. The thrust now has to be on easy access to raw materials and exports of value-added products. Towards this, last year, we started overhauling the a customs duty structure, eliminating 80 outdated exemptions. I also thank everyone who responded overwhelmingly to a crowdsourcing call for suggestions on this revamp. I now propose to review more than 400 old, exem sorry, 400 old exemptions this year. I repeat, I now propose to review more than 400 old exemptions this year. We will conduct this through extensive con consultations and from 1st October 2021, we will put in place a revised customs duty structure free of distortions. I also propose that any new customs duty exemptions, therefore, henceforth, will have validity up to 31st March, following two years from the date of the issue. Electronic and mobile phone industry. Domestic electronic manufacturing has grown rapidly. We are now exporting items like mobiles and chargers. For greater domestic value addition, we are withdrawing a few exemptions on part of chargers and subparts of mobiles. Further, some parts of mobiles will move from nil rate to a moderate 2.5 percent. Iron and steel. MSMEs and other user industries have been severely hit by a recent sharp rise in iron and steel prices. Therefore, we are reducing customs duty uniformly to 7.5% on semis, flats, and long products of non-alloy, alloy, and stainless steels to provide relief to metal recyclers, mostly MSMEs, and exempting duty on steel scrap for a period up to 31st March 2022. Further, I'm also revoking ADD and CBD on certain steel products. Also, to provide relief to copper recyclers, I am reducing duty on copper scrap from 5% to 2.5%. Textiles. The textile sector generates employment and contributes significantly to the economy. There is a need to rationalize duties on raw material inputs to man-made textiles. We are now bringing nylon chain on par with polyester and other man-made fibers. We are uniformly reducing the BCD rates on caprolactam, nylon chips, nylon fiber, and yarn to 5%. This will help the textile industry, MSMEs, and also overall exports. Chemicals. We have calibrated customs duty rates on chemicals to encourage domestic value addition and to remove inversions. Apart from other items, we are reducing customs duty on NAFTA to 2.5% to correct inversion. Gold and silver presently attract a basic customs duty of 12.5%. Since the duty was raised from 10% in July 19, prices of precious metals have risen sharply. To bring it closer to previous levels, we are rationalizing customs duty on gold and silver. Renewable energy. In Part A, we have already acknowledged that solar energy has huge promise for India. To build up domestic capacity, we will notify a phased manufacturing plan for solar cells and solar panels. At present, to encourage domestic production, we are raising duty on solar inverters from 5% to 20% and on solar lanterns from 5% to 15%. <clears throat> capital equipment and auto parts. There is immense potential in manufacturing heavy capital equipment domestically. We will comprehensively review the rate structure in due course. However, we are revising duty rates on certain items immediately. We propose to withdraw exemptions on tunnel boring machine. It will attract a customs duty of 7.5% and its parts a duty of 2.5%.
We are raising customs duty on certain auto parts to 15% to bring them on par with general rate on auto parts. MSME products. We are proposing certain changes to benefit MSMEs. We are increasing duty from 10 to 15% on steel screws and plastic builder wares. On prawn feed, we increase it from 5 to 15%. We are rationalizing exemption on import of duty-free items as an incentive to exporters of garments, leather, and handicraft items. Almost all of these items are made domestically by our MSMEs. We are withdrawing exemption on imports of certain kinds of leathers as they are domestically produced in good quantity and quality, mostly by MSMEs. We are also raising customs duty on finished synthetic gemstones to encourage domestic processing. Agriculture products to benefit farmers. We are raising customs duty on cotton from nil to 10%, on raw silk and silk yarn from 10 to 15%, we are also withdrawing end use based concession on denatured ethyl alcohol. Currently, rates are being uniformly calibrated to 15% on items like maize, bran, rice bran, oil cake, and animal feed additives. There is an immediate need to improve agricultural infrastructure so that we produce more while also conserving and processing agricultural output efficiently. This will ensure enhanced remuneration for our farmers. To earmark resources for this purpose, I propose an Agricultural Infrastructure and Development CES on a small number of items. However, while I'm applying this CES, we have taken care not to put additional burden on consumers on most items. Rationalization of procedures and easing of compliance. For a judicious application, we propose certain changes in the provisioning related to ADD, anti-dumping duty, and CBD countervailing duty levies. To complete customs investigation, we are prescribing definite timelines. In 2020, we rolled out the Turant Customs Initiative, which brought in faceless, paperless, and contactless customs measures. With effects from September 2020, we have implemented a new procedure for administration of rules of origin. This has helped in putting a check on misuse of FTAs. The specific details of direct and indirect tax changes proposed, listed, uh, proposed are listed in the annexure to my speech. Honorable Speaker, sir, with these words, I commend the budget to this August House. Thank you. Item number one. Mani Mantiji, item number one. Sir, I wish to place on table the 15th Finance Commission report. Item number three. Mani Mantiji. But I wish to lay on the table the following statements under Section 3.1 of the Fiscal Responsibility and Budget Management Act 2003, the medium-term fiscal policy come fiscal policy strategy statement and macroeconomic framework statement. Item number four. So I wish to seek your permission to move for leave to introduce the Finance Bill 2021. प्रश्न ये कि विधेयक को पुरे स्थापित करने की अनुमति प्रदान की जाए जो सदस्य इसके पक्ष में हां कहें जो सदस्य इसके विरोध में ना कहें मेरे विचार में निर्णय हां वालों के पक्ष में हुआ हां वालों के पक्ष में मान्य मंत्री जी विधेयक को पुरे स्थापित करें श्री पलाज जोशी जी विद योर परमिशन आई राइज टू प्रेजेंट the 18th report of business advisory committee manya sadashyagan manya vitt mantri ji ke budget bhashan ki pratiyan prakashak palak par uplabdh hai sadashya apni prati prakashan palak se praapt kar sakte hain manya sadashyagan jaisa ki aapko samachar 2 ke madhyam se pehle sushchit kiya ja chuka hai 
की बजट की प्रतियां आपको मेंबर्स पोर्टल के माध्यम से उपलब्ध कराई जा रही है सभा की कार्रवाई Well, a lot of important things have happened in this budget. Hmm. Not as long as we saw it the last year. Last year, it was a little longer than our budget. This year, we have done. But uh, it's been good. It's been different. But the most important thing, which I think, which happened. बिगेस्ट चेंज द बिगेस्ट फाउंडेशनल चेंज दैट वी सॉ एज प्रोफेशनल स्टूडेंट हमको जो सबसे ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट दिखा है वो ये दिखा है सेबी एक्ट डिपोजिटरीज एक्ट सिक्योरिटीज एक्ट गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज एक्ट को एक साथ ला के सिक्योरिटीज मार्केट कोड बनाया जा रहा है सिक्योरिटीज कोड एकदम लेमैन टर्म्स में बात करें सो दिस इज द जीएसटी हैपनिंग जो पहले के बहुत सारे लॉज को ला के साथ में जीएसटी बनाया गया था इन द सेम वे अब सिक्योरिटीज मार्केट कोड लाया जा रहा है ताकि जो गवर्नमेंट बॉन्ड्स थे या जो इन्वेस्टर्स का रिलायंस था सब कुछ थोड़ा सीमलेस हो सके क्या इसके लिए प्रॉपर क्लियर फ्रेमवर्क मिला हुआ है नहीं मिला है मैं अभी भी यूनियन बजट का आप देख रहा हूँ इट हेज स्टिल नॉट बीन अपलोडेड विद दिक्शर्स दैट आई वॉन्टेड टू लुक एट तो वह इनिक्शर्स को देख के जो अमेंडमेंट अब तुम्हारे लाइफ में आने वाले हैं तुम सिक्योरिटीज एस बी सी का तुम पढ़ रहे थे सेटिंग ऑफ बिजनेस एंटिटीज पढ़ रहे थे तुम सिक्योरिटीज लॉज पढ़ रहे थे तुम कंपनी लॉ पढ़ रहे थे इवन कंपनी लॉ में चेंजेस हैं ये सारे के सारे चेंजेस जून के एग्जाम में रिफ्लेक्ट हो जाएंगे सीएस वालों के लिए मैं सीए इंटर की बात कर रहा हूं मई में तुम्हारे में भी बहुत सारे चेंजेस दिखेंगे टैक्स में जो सीएस एग्जीक्यूटिव में भी बेसिकली तुमको दिखना है सो यू हैव टू लुक इन टू दैट नाउ ये सारे के सारे अमेंडमेंट्स हम अभी अपने क्लास में डिस्कस कर लेंगे आज से दो दिनों के अंदर में देर विल बी सम वीडियोज कमिंग आउट ऑन द चैनल इट जो तुमको डायरेक्टली उन अमेंडमेंट्स के लिए गाइड कर रहे होंगे सो दैट यू कैन डू इट इजली जैसे कि तुमने शायद पहले क्लास ली हुई हो कहीं और से तुम एग्जाम दे रहे हो इस अटैम्प में यू नीड टू नो दमेंडमेंट्स सो वी हैव डन दैट फॉर यू इंश्योरेंस एक्ट में भी चेंज है तो सी एम इंटर वाले भी नहीं बच पाए उनके लिए भी अमेंडमेंट आए हैं एफ का जो लिमिट था फोर्टी नाइन परसेंट से सेवेंटी फोर परसेंट कर दिया गया है ताकि फॉरन ओनरशिप हो सके ऑफ इंश्योरेंस कंपनीज तो बहुत सारी चीजें इसमें चेंज होंगी राइट बोर्ड में कोई लिमिटेशन डाली हुई है फिफ्टी परसेंट इंडिपेंडेंट डायरेक्टर्स होने चाहिए आपके रेजिडेंट इंडियन डायरेक्टर ज्यादा होने चाहिए उसमें मेजोरिटी में बट दैट इज टोटली डिफरेंट थिंग डी आई सी जी सी एक्ट नाइनटीन सिक्सटी वन इसमें भी चेंजेस देखे गए डी क्रिमिनलाइजेशन के बारे में रिट्रेट किया गया पॉइंट की डी क्रिमिनलाइजेशन ऑफ अलॉट ऑफ इशूज अंडर दी कंपनीज एक्ट टू थाउजेंड थर्टीन हैज है सेक्शन 447 हट चुका है क्या नहीं हटा है सेक्शन 447 वैसा ही है जैसा था बट डिक्रिमिनलाइजेशन हुआ है बहुत सारे इश्यूज को लेके एंड द सेम विल बी डन फॉर एल एल पी टू एक्ट लिमिटेड लाइबिलिटी पार्टनरशिप के लिए भी होगा स्मॉल कंपनीज का अपडेट आई थिंक लास्ट ईयर अगस्त में आया था जब फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर निर्मला सीतारामन जी और अनुराग ठाकुर आए थे इंग्लिश हिंदी दोनों में प्रेस, प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस हुई थी जहाँ पे बता दिया गया था कि स्मॉल कंपनीज का थ्रेश पेड़ शेयर कैपिटल में जो 50 लाख माना जाता था वो दो करोड़ किया जा रहा है और टर्न ओवर जो दो करोड़ माना जाता था उसे 20 करोड़ किया जा रहा है सो दीज आर फ्यू थिंग्स एज फाइनेंस स्टूडेंट्स 
जो एज प्रोफेशनल स्टूडेंट्स वी हैव टू फोकस ऑन वाइल वी आर लुकिंग एट द बजट ये सारे मैंने नोट्स बनाए हैं अपने इन पे दिस आई विल बी शेयरिंग विद यू गाइस बट दिस वाज आवर इनिशिएटिव दिस वाज समथिंग दैट आई वांटेड टू डू विद यू गाइस ताकि हम बजट में इंटरेस्ट ले सके आई हैव सीन एवरी सीएचएस सीएमएस स्टूडेंट वो वेट करता है कि बजट का कोई और न्यूज चैनल कुछ फोट करेगा कोई पार्ट मैं वो पढ़ूंगा वो समझूंगा नहीं तुम ही वो लोग हो जो ऐसे बजट्स को फॉर्म करते हैं इन द मिनिस्ट्री द पीपल हु आर एम्प्लॉयड टू मेक द बजट आर द प्रोफेशनल लाइक यू यू वांट टू बी अ प्रोफेशनल राइट यू आर स्टडीइंग टू बिकम अ प्रोफेशनल सो दिस इज योर ड्यूटी टू अंडरस्टैंड द प्रोसेस दिस इज योर ड्यूटी टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट आर द की चेंजेस ट्राई एंड इंटरप्रेट इट ऑन योर ओन खुद से इंटरप्रेट करके देखो ना क्या होगा ज्यादा ज्यादा यू माइट फेल इन टू इट यस सर तुम थोड़ा सा फेल हो जाओगे इंटरप्रेट करने में थोड़ा सा इशू आएगा थोड़ी मुश्किलें होंगी कि अरे समझ नहीं आया जान रिसर्च करेंगे हम उसके बारे में टीचर्स हैं यहाँ पे मेंटर्स हैं तुमको पूरे टाइम मिलेंगे जो तुमसे बात करेंगे तुम्हारी हेल्प करेंगे बट बजट में इंटरेस्ट लेना जरूरी है नॉट जस्ट फॉर दिस ईयर तुम सी बन जाओगे तुम सी बन जाओगे तुम सी बन जाओगे हर बजट तुम्हारे लिए सबसे ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट है अ लॉट ऑफ प्रोफेशनल रियल लाइफ में प्रोफेशनल ये इशू फेस करते हैं कि जो अमेंडमेंट आते हैं वो उससे अप टू डेट नहीं होते क्योंकि उनके पास पुराना काम ही इतना ओवर बर्डन ट्रू होता है बट इट्स योर रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी कि आप सारे नए चेंजेस देखें ट्रैक करें कि आगे और कौन से चेंजेस आने हैं ताकि जो आपके क्लाइंट्स होंगे द वंस हु यू विल बी सर्विंग आप उनको बेस्ट गाइडेंस दे सकते सो बजट्स के लिए आई ऑलवेज हैड यूनिक मैं हर बार चेक करता हूँ बजट के वीडियोज इस साल आई थॉट आई लाइफ स्ट्रीम दस विद यू गाइज ताकि कुछ भी बच्चे ही से कोई भी आके अगर हमारे साथ बैठ के उस बजट को पूरा सुनता है अंडरस्टैंड कि क्या नया हो रहा है कौन कौन सी चीजें अप्लाई हो रही हैं उस लोकसभा की वर्किंग ही कैसे हुई एट द एंड ऑफ द डे कि सारी चीजों में एक बेसिक इंफॉर्मेशन होना जरूरी है ऑन पेपर पढ़ाई करके कुछ नहीं मिलेगा जब तक रियल लाइफ वर्ल्ड में चेंजेस कैसे हो रहे हैं वाई यू आर सिटिंग एट योर होम सिपिंग कप ऑफ कॉपी आपको नहीं पता है तो आप उन चेंजेस को अडॉप्ट नहीं कर दिस वॉज द लाइफ स्ट्रीम आई बी पुटिंग आउट दी अमेंडमेंट वीडियोज राइट अवे जितना जल्दी हो सके हम बनाना अभी से ही चालू कर देंगे वी विल ऑल्सो नो प्लीज मेक श्योर टू लीव अ लाइक सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल शेयर इट विद योर फ्रेंड्स क्योंकि आगे बजट के अमेंडमेंट वीडियोज तुम्हारे आने वाले सब्जेक्ट्स को बहुत ज्यादा इफेक्ट करेंगे सो यू हैव टू लुक इन टू इट सो दैट यू अंडरस्टैंड इट राइट दिस हैज बीन इट फॉर टू डेज लाइव स्ट्रीम इफ देर समथिंग दैट यू गाइज वुड लाइक टू आस्क एस डिस्क्रिप्शन में टेलीग्राम लिंक दिया हुआ है हमारे ग्रुप्स का वहां पर जाके तुम सारे सवाल पूछ सकते हो Wow, fairly active right then we'll answer you guys right apart from this if there is anything else that i can help you out with you can put it in the chat i look into it nahi to hum milte hain next live stream mein classes mein jahan pe ye amendments hum apply kare kyunki amendments current affairs cset levels ka le lu main clack ke liye le lu har class ke liye applicable hai 100% change hai purana kuch bhi padhaunga sab change ho chuka hai so bahut sare amendments ko hum ek sath All right. Thank you, everyone. We will be meeting you in the class soon enough. Make sure you read the budget on your download. Karlo Union Budget app. Usme tum toh tumhara budget mil jayega. Okay. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.